arses now. For a Frisian now, he is a, a great square arse. Hello everybody, my name is Farmer Phil and today, well, I know I'm in the machinery shed, but today we are getting ready for more calves coming and we're putting in the automatic feeders, uh, even though they're not service. Oh, I dropped my spanner. Even though they're not serviced, um, we're still waiting on piping to come so we can service them ourselves. But we still only have four calves, but we were putting off more calves coming till we could get the feeders in. But then we couldn't. Pipes had to come from Germany and they're not here yet. And bit of a palava. I think, yeah, palava, that's what my girlfriend says. Um, or a mess, I don't know, everyone will call it anyways. But we have to go get calves tonight. There's 20 calves. 20 calves coming in off two different farms tonight and I have to go get this with one man with two men working for us at the minute me one of my father is going off to move slurry for a lad around tanks or for to different farms or something they're going with tankers anyways to go move slurry um, the other man is washing off the stations and I have to go move straw in the shed but the reason I am in this shed is because I need that battery to get my 3690 oh where it is um, I could just jump my tractor and move it and then I'll have to jump it the next time but the combine has a new battery, it's not doing anything so we're just going to take it and put it into my tractor so that I can start it when I need to start it and also if it does drain the battery because it's only a brand new battery it would mean that my alternator is leaking juice or I have a different problem, there's stuff getting out somewhere so I'll have to put dead man's on it or change my alternator but anyways we'll go get this battery out of here. I can't really see what I'm doing now either. Um, also, as you can probably hear, it's absolutely pissing rain. Storm Dennis in full swing. But anyways, what can you do? The, the slurry, there's that much slurry on, and as again, under so much pressure with tanks and that, and there's just no weather to get slurry out. I just, no weather. So we're going to be out for the next couple of days. So we're going to get a lot of jobs tidied up around the yard, but this is the first job that needs to get done, especially with calves coming in tonight. But anyways, I may go get this out, then I have to go move the my tractor out of the hay shed or straw shed, whatever you want to call it, the hay shed. Um, put out in the rain, or I might put under a canopy shed if I can. Then we'll go get this battery out of here. You know it's rained a lot when you have the three puddles on the front of the lawn, in front of the house. A lot of rain has fallen. A lot of rain. So now everyone, here we are. Terry 690. I have me bucket there or me battery in the front of the shear grab. Probably should have opened it, but anyways, we get old Betsy going. I have to open up this and get this panel off. It's a great day for making an old YouTube video. And also, as you can see, we have a pair of books floating about. Um, as you may be wondering from um, that we had cattle out, they are brought back in. And so as the cattle was on the rift, they're also in. So we've only, I think, 10 outside um, in a very sheltered spot. They're not asking them today, but this weather. Not good, so I mean move the teleporter out of the way and then we go fire up this girl and get her. I might actually fire her up now and see that she actually starts. Just before, just in case something will be wrong. Oh haven't started her in a while now. On the boat. Like that's wrong but when my father was saying we do 
we take out an injector and we get it tested and see that the injectors are okay they're not then we'll put a new set of injectors in it but it's something that we will do to just to double check and make sure there is we'll go get the telly moved out of the way Hello no, everyone, camera is clean, it is clean. Right, so we get this girl out, <coughs> out of here now. So, still is in the low box. Um, there's a switch in it somewhere that we haven't found yet for changing it. We get out of here now. We've had her put it in, so I can't imagine. Um, oh. Trapped there for keeping the roof on during wind. Also, for some of you, I can't remember did I see it in the last video or not, but I do have the mud guards for us or the front fenders. So I get them. I'm hoping now tomorrow, um, provide well, even if it is rainy, I can do it in the meal shed. That's where I'm going to put this now, where it had been for a while. So we moved it down there just to have it out of the way because it's a bit of a pain having to start a jump it every day to get it out of the way. Whatever, we're motoring now. So we'll just go straight into the meal shed where it is out of the way. Now, hopefully, tomorrow, um, if I get a chance at all, I'm gonna do a bit of work to put back on the fenders, change that door, I might put on that pocket on that door, and have a new hook. Well, it's a good second hand hook to go into it. But that would be my plan anyways so hopefully now hopefully i get get to do that tomorrow so you haven't really got to see much of this tractor yet and the same with the 64.99 either you haven't really seen much of it in action yet either but the 64.99 has been on the my tanker the dribble bar tanker going 90 uh doing jobs but moving slower more so moving slower than doing anything else and I normally do the feeding when my father does that at night, but that's it. Oh, I love the noise of this yo. It's as sweet as a penny. Anyways, it'll be interesting to see now does the battery go flat on this after a day or so. So if it does then I know that I have a problem. If it doesn't, then I know it's just the other battery is bottom. So, anyways, we leave that for now. We'll go get the telly and we'll go behind the forks and we go start moving straw in the shed. So, just before I do time lapse, just before you go and comment about the state of the telly porter, yes, it's an absolute mess because we do quite a bit of road work with it at the minute and going to and from out farms. It, a lot of road dirt has gone on it and then farm muck and everything it doesn't really help but just take that into consideration I am acknowledging it's not great um, we're at, we are after buying a power washer and we're after getting a new hose for we have an old Carter K4 with the hose broken it and we're going to set it up over the reception pit but we're keeping our machines washed that's the idea anyways but we have to get set up and it hasn't been set up yet that old rattly yoke um, also I have to move these bags, bag of lime, and there's a weighing, a weighing scales under it. I have to move that out of the way somewhere. And then I have to move all this straw in there, all of that, right back up to sort of the barrier. I have to try and find homes for all of that. So I probably stack a lot of it there and a lot of it just here where we're standing. But I want to leave enough space to, that I can park the tractor back in here to keep it out of rain. Otherwise, you know yourself, it's like every other tractor around the place, it'd be left out to the, the elements. Anyways, I get started.
so now everyone we have the straw eventually moved so as you see there we have just a line of bales there we have to take the nets off them that's a bale for bedding and we have around here give them more kind of a space break the wind give them lots of nice little sheltery spots we peg most of the bales over there and I have to sort how I just sort of kept throwing them across because I run out of space to put them. I have to take them out and build up that corner there. And we have gates then to just go around outside just to start, try and stop them from eating the nets. That was a problem last year where we did have them in. But the nets, the nets of the bales, there wasn't enough net for all the bales that were eaten. And we did lose a few to bloat and what we call twisted guts and I have a fe funny feeling it was because nets were getting eaten so we're going to take the nets off the bottom ones we use the top ones for bedding and that's the plan so Liv is just feeding the calves and we're ready to plant the feeders so also just on the four calves uh, some of you are saying you want to follow them through the system so I know the numbers so you can put names in the comments down below on what you want to call the calves and um, I'll try and over the next two years till we put them, turn them to beef, I'll try and follow them through their life cycle on the farm. So that is the plan. So you can do that and I may get to work and um, keep these men busy. So. so we just have our feeders in. We do have the other stations for the other feeder that we're always left here. So we have to give that wash and plumb it up. And as you can see there, the calves are going for a nice little gallop now that they've been ex got more space to run. And we just have a lot more gates to bring in. Just to keep them back from the straw. And we'll use these top bales for bedding then when we run out. And we'll work away into the shed as we get more calves. But for the time being, 20 calves now will have a great time in here. So they will. A great time. So now that is the next load of calves off. Most of the calves that we get, they come in out of out of single stalls or in small pens, and then they come here, and all of a sudden they got lots of space to run around and play. So. Happy calves, so they are happy calves. So they're just going now to go get the next load of calves. So we got finished setting this up. And when we get this up then, we're gonna have to go stick button tags in all of them boys. So that's gonna be fun. But we'll let them run around and have a bit of fun and let them settle down before we go at them. So anyways, the four calves is on about four. I know their numbers, so if you want, to give them a comment down below a name you want to give them and i'll try and follow them for cat right through to the end game when they're going for beef so that's it we'll go and get this set up we have to go get another that feeder wash now so. So, just so we have them in, we're just getting that washed over there. And um, just in terms of wash to be done with servicing these, it's a matter of replacing all the pipe work in that. Before we start feeding cows, we'll put it on uh, rinse cycles. We'll wash it maybe three or four times before we actually start feeding any of the calves. That would be the plan. So now everyone, you're gonna have to bear with me and hear over the noise of the calves. But we have our feeder set up. Um, the camera went dead last night, that's why you didn't see any more. But we have it all set up. Um, we haven't fed the calves yet on the feeder. We fed. We had to put gates and six-tit feeder and a few at a time. But you can see there, 
there's all our calves now quite quite a nice view i think there's 27 in there at the minute so quite a nice view to just get started with but we'll get the feeder to do another few wash rinses just to make sure now it's well washed and then we'll turn the micro placer and feed them so there's all our new boys but something i just want to show you now we have two two different farms here and as you can see we have these very little small jersey calves and then we have you can see the lad at the back there great big freezing calves there's another oh no that's an angus but there, oh there's some of my soft foot um, but there's nice big freezing calves in there as well and there's a red angus but anyways just to just to show you the difference in the calves like there's tiny where it's the, i think it's the first time we've really ever got extreme jersey now we, normally we would be getting a jersey uh, where cross off a good holstein or something like that to be nice with size in them but these little jerseys have very little size in them so it'll be interesting to see how they do but then we have them other bigger freezing calves there this lad here them calves they are the top end of the calves that we buy every year so they are they're they're the, the top end the cows they come off are a 50 50 holstein british frisian and the last year we bought calves and like, i look at that lad there as look look how square his arse is now for a frisian now he is a, a great square arse but anyways just as i was saying the last year we bought this man's calves and our the last batch that we finished um them calves all finished the average was an o plus two plus great weights huge and they were bred off 100 percent holstein bull so they ended up anywhere from i think it was 90 to about 70 percent holstein i don't know what bull the farmer used this year but that's it that's the calves 25 of them in now i'm gonna go do a bit of pushing in and stuff let the feeder rinse again and then i might turn it on and we might take in the feeding we do have to some of them have eid tags so the, most, the, all the little ones have eid tags but the big guys don't so we have to go stick tags in or cable tie button tags into them something else i can see is a problem as you can see there's a jersey in there now and it's absolutely no size you can put two of them in side by side so something i'd say we're gonna have to do as you can see the balls there there's the one no there's none that side but the balls we're gonna have to push that in to narrow that space just to stop the calves pushing other calves down when they do get used to it so anyways i'm gonna finish up the video at that so hope you enjoyed the video we're well and truly getting underway with calves from next week on i'd say we're gonna have to start taking straw of that shed we won't be able to use bales quick enough for them on the calves to go come in because it's just all of a sudden literally all the cows in the country calf and then within the space of about four weeks you have every calf you need got so that's it the fun has really and truly begun so i leave that to now how go off and do that i hope you enjoyed this video if you have any comments and like that hit me down in the comments down below um my new merch i actually have it on underneath but i'm not exactly going to strip down to show you my new t-shirt because it's a bit on the cold side but um if you want new merch head over to in the description down below also my old merch it's still there until it's gone it's the last time you'll get my old merch um i'll probably bring it to different shows and stuff and sell it off that way as well but check that out um yeah that's really it hope you enjoyed this video that is it for me please like and subscribe to my channel good luck